Writing, teaching, reflections are a key component of your Lumen Circles experience. But how do you go about preparing your reflection while in the Lumen platform? Hello, I'm Tricia Nolfi, and I'm a facilitator with Lumen Circles. Throughout your fellowship, you will go through cycles of planning and reflection. When thinking about planning, you'll consider examples and tools for how to apply evidence-based teaching practices, or TAGs, in connection with your circle theme. You'll consider what you're doing already and make plans for new practices you'd like to try out to support your students' success. During those times when you're reflecting on your teaching, you'll analyze specific teaching experiences, what you did, how it worked, what you learned, and what you'll do differently next time. Each week throughout the fellowship, you'll also respond to peers, consider feedback from your circle, and make plans for the future. So in each week, you will see that there are the different activities that you go through. Once you go through the assigned materials for the week, you're going to actually go ahead and then see down at the bottom, you're going to be asked to complete your reflection. When you look at this reflection, you're going to see a couple of things. First of all, you're going to see the time frame for when that reflection should be completed. So know that you want to keep track of when your reflection should be due so that other peers can go ahead and actually respond. So you can just go ahead and select your name and then it will take you to the reflection page. You'll see that on this page, there are different fields that you need to complete. First is the title. The title should highlight the current topic or main focus of your class or activity. Titles should be descriptive and interesting to encourage fellows to read your reflection post. You will then select the course that you're actually completing this reflection for. Next, you're going to identify the learning objectives. You're going to identify the learning objectives for this particular class or for that particular activity. And remember, objectives should describe the specific skill or knowledge students will demonstrate as a result of this activity. So for my example, and for the course, The Practice of Leadership, I have two learning objectives that I want to focus on for this particular activity. Next, as you go down, you're actually going to give your circle a view into your particular class session or to the activity. So here in this section, you're going to describe the specific activities and assessments you use and any relevant prior student work or progress that informed your approach. The focus here should not be on your teaching strategies and assessments and not on the content of your discipline. Remember that the reader may not be an expert in your discipline, but that you all share the common language around teaching. So for my example here, you'll see that I gave a description of the activity that I'm completing. I also chose to use some tags to highlight practices that I'm intentionally thinking about for this activity. I also discussed why I'm doing this activity. And here there are different ways that you can list your activity and what the students are going to do. But for me, I just went ahead and went through the different steps the students are actually going to go through for this particular activity. Next, you're actually going to want to go ahead and then talk about the assessment. You will then descri describe how the assessment demonstrates student achievement of the specific learning objectives. Here you want to include all type of student actions and output that you observed as a result of the activities that you described. Here you want to ensure that you have created a line of sight among your learning objectives, the learning activities, and the assessments. So here I just chose to restate my learning objectives and then described how I know that the students have met them. There are different ways that you can do this again. You can choose to share a rubric. So I noted that the students' uh, outputs are going to be described specifically on the rubric. So I might choose to share that with the community. Next, you will see that you also have an opportunity to provide attachments. So you can attach worksheets, um, discussion starters, um, any types of materials that the students are going to use. Um, and, and this is helpful to help the peers in your circle understand more about your teaching strategies. If you do do this and you use student materials, you do want to make sure that you black out any names, IDs, or other identifying information about your students. So if you, for me, I do want to attach a file. So I would browse and go to my local computer files and select the file. And then I would also describe what it is. 
So for my activity, I have the students completing an interview with the local leader. So here I will browse for that file to share it, and then I'm going to actually name it, and then I'm going to select Attach File. As I scroll down, you're going to see the tags, and we don't want to forget our tags. In addition to using them in your reflection, you, could also select, you should also select the evidence-based instructional practices used in your reflection. So here, you want to be sure that you're being selective and thoughtful about tagging so that your pedagogical profile will accurately reflect your teaching practices. So thinking back to my reflection, I know that I used something from the challenging theme. I focused on self-reflection. But here for this particular activity, my main focus was the belonging theme. And I focused on the tag of representation as well as engaging intersectionality. I also did use from the very theme as well by focusing on multimedia learning. So for me, I know that these four tags were really evident in the teaching reflection that I posted. At the bottom here, I can also describe some additional details about how I did use those tags. So here I use the self-reflection in the videos that the students created. And so for each one of these, I can add additional details. Um, however, if you did choose to use the tags in your actual reflection as I did, you don't have to add as much detail because here the tags are connected to the particular learning activity. But generally, you do want to make sure that you take time to describe how you actually use these tags. And this is really important because it focuses again on being intentional in your teaching practices. We want to make sure that your reflections are connecting to those practices that you're using or that you're planning to use. And then next, you can also think about any of your ideas. So we know one of the best things about your Lumen platform is collecting all the ideas that you get from the library or some feedback from your peers or other things that come up in conversation. So I would look through my idea drawer and say, okay, does this reflection connect to any of those ideas? And for me, for this particular reflection, it does not. And so then at the bottom here, we have this discussion section. And so this is an opportunity for you to reflect a little bit more on how the activity is doing. And so you can again, fill out a little bit more detail about the reflection, what you think worked well, what didn't work well. And these are great discussion starters for your peers in the circle to give you feedback. And then finding, you can actually add some more plans. So once you've thought about what worked and what didn't work, what plans you might want to make for the future, you can go ahead and add to your idea drawer here. Once I do this, you can go ahead and look at it again. You can select the preview button, and then you can save and publish. And so at its core, the fellowship guides you through cycles of exploring, planning, and reflection and it offers you a space to think about deeply about how you teach and to find ways to expand your teaching repertoire using evidence-based teaching practices. I really hope that this video was helpful for you, and now you are ready to craft a well-thought-out reflection.